Welcome to my our studio. So this is my this is not my first package, but it's like second. Okay, cool. So I kind of know what I'm doing, but kind of not. A um, couple things I want to talk about. I don't. We can talk at a very high level what this package does. That kind of doesn't matter for my questions. I wrote a manuscript in grad school about um, there's a lot of different methods to count the core uh, microbes. So like if you, it, all these like hot microbiome studies, if you guys know about that, like these three microbes really matter. They're in your core microbiome. So there's like these five methods that I scraped a bajillion papers and basically my paper shows that it's, I'm not saying there's no such thing as a core, but all these methods that people use show different results. So it's like a methods paper. So I was like, that would be a perfect thing to make a package. So that way I could tell people, instead of just being super pessimistic, test yourself, see if your, see if your uh, microbial data or whatever kind of count data fits in the structure. So, I also thought this was a great idea for a package because if we go into my R folder, there's really not many functions. So it's pretty cute. So each function is like one of these different methods from a paper and they're all just like these cutie little dplyr um, pipelines. And then I have a vignette. Blah, 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 blah. Where are you at? Um, that walks you through how to use this package, um, the assumptions about your data, how to manipulate your data if they don't meet those criteria, walks you through, and then even makes these cool Venn diagram plotty things. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this, in the paper, I, we use, I simulated a data set so I know what is a core thing. And that way, when I ran it on these methods and they weren't able to say that they're the core or not, that was like, okay, proof. So I have my simulated data, but we use two um, actual, two data sets from papers. And I wanna include those as data objects in the package. Um, and the way that I did that was using, we didn't get to this chapter yet, but I did use this use data. And um, so in my data raw, I have the data and then you do some manipulation on it. You get these, you get these RDA files. And now I'm able to, okay, Arabidopsis, that's a type of plant. But now that I have this package loaded, I have access to this thing. So I have all these data sets and I want them all, but I have this warning. Does anyone have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions? I'm reading this as you, you're including too much data in your package. I guess if anyone, first of all, do you know what this means and what its implications are? And then secondly, um, is there a way to like, I know there's lazy loading of data, which I don't even really know what that means, but is there a way to be like, when the user calls this package, it doesn't give you this data until you ask for it, or is that happening by default anyways? Uh, that's what lazy load is. Okay. Um, R is like, R has a thing about their packages being five megabytes in total um, and so they um, so they so CRAN actually I just had this problem um, was I was submitting to CRAN this past weekend um, and they restrict like the compressed package size so you just ran command check Mm -hmm. If you go up a directory, so outside of the core, not not in the console, in your file structure, outside of core micro, so um, 
Yeah, you get that. Those documents, you, you get, get that, like the, the package build. That has to be five megabytes. There's like certain restrictions about how big a package can be. And I don't know that, they, I think they still apply to data packages. So when you're, so that's game over for me. I can't submit this package to Fran. Um, in data roles in your build ignore, right? If you use, use, can you compress it? It's not. Is it compressed? Could it be? No, data uh, data raw is at the bottom. Yeah, oh. I see data raw there. Okay. Uh, does it need to be data raw asterisk or that, that will just, that will include everything? That should be everything. That's how, uh, it must be, that's how the, uh, um that's yeah, how we use this put it in right um the other thing i would suggest is can you go to your data raw and generate those again show me how it's generated again yes is that what you want to look at yeah um is there does rda do the compressing Wait. Do you write it as an RDA here somewhere? No. Let's use this use data. The, I wonder if it's like already gzipping your data for you or something. What is I don't know the difference. Should I be doing an RDS? Uh, it's already compressing, I think. Yeah, what what exactly is the difference between RDS and RDA? I saw that on Twitter, and I have no idea. Um, uh, yeah, I think from what I remember, looking at how you the use data function works, it saves it as like a bzip. Uh, um, yeah, bzip two. I, I, RDS is not a compressed file, so RDA should be smaller. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, I just, I'm not totally sure. Can we like try like try. sending empty cars or something as both? Uh, yes. Uh, try XZ Maya. It will be slower to generate, but it should be more compressed. Maybe. You actually have to. Uh, oh, do you have it in your environment? Yeah, I mean. We used poop data. Let's see how it's still. Um, yeah, it's here. Uh, is it in your environment, though? <laughs> so, like, assign it to itself, yeah. Save existing named objects. So one difference is how RDAs is like saving an object with its name in your current environment. When you load it, you can only load it into the same name that it was saved from. Uh, in RDA, RDS, you can load into, attach to any name when you load it. Interesting. So you want to use RDA if you're including data in your package. Uh, I think, I mean, doesn't, isn't that what, I think it says you can use anything, but the preferences oh. RDA. What if I try deleting this? Just use this use data, just use an object and Wait. not. I'm just looking at 14.2. Don't forget in the chat. It lit.
Sorry, the gallery view of Zoom is in my way. Okay. Um, cool. So now I just deleted that and can't do this. <laughs> Like I think it's not supposed to be saved as a character vector to your file. Like it's supposed to be saved as the object name, so like literally human stool. What do you mean? Like remove that? Mm -hmm. So Is human that? stool, human stool. No. Uh, yeah, human stool again. Okay. I think if you just pass it an object, it'll do it. It I mean, uses the name as the final name. X said, yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um, and now we're. Let me go into. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going into the trash. Uh, 491 KB. And this is 479.2. So we shed some. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. I, don't know if, I don't know if it's... Yeah, I'm confused about. Hang on, I'm trying to find the writing it R extensions install package size thing. What about setting internal equals true? What is, Where? Uh, and use data. What does that mean? Uh, it says we bypass the usual export mechanism. And then the user doesn't get to use it. No, no, okay, right. That's what that's what happens when it's false, which is the default. So if you set it to true, uh, no, uh, internal would prevent the user from using it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although, yeah. Uh, So what you could do is store this data in a GitHub that's ignored and then have a function, have your function download it if it's not already saved to memory, depending on how much data for these examples they are. So, so like you could I'm gonna reiterate that. Make a little repo of the data and then write some script that looks to see if this data exists and if it doesn't pull it from the internet? Yes. Interesting. Because you're, you're packaging up the methods. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. And I can always include like this one and this one and put the other ones in there. Yeah, like include the most important ones or like yeah. the bare minimum example one. And then um, what I like you could that. do is like download the data if internet is available. Um, and otherwise warn that. But then you're getting into like, I don't know, download file should be fairly, like should be base R, so. Okay, I, I actually like that idea because those are those are less important. I just want a paper trip. Like this is the, um, the like companion to a manuscript. So that's why I want all the stuff that's in the manuscript, but I could have two repos. I like that idea. Okay, my next question, that, so that 
hopefully we'll get rid of my one warning. My next question was like, if you all were to pretend to be Cran people, can we quickly go over what you would be looking for and what would set off a red flag for you? Maybe not quick. You probably want better than Cran checking, to be honest. Like, Cran will check the very, like, physical things, I guess, but, like, not the code itself. Have you submitted to Cran before? No. Yeah. So if you, I uh, don't remember the command to submit it, but if you do that, it goes through this big checklist of things that uh, need to be true. Um, and that can be helpful. There's a lot of questions. Uh, there a fake submit it before actually submitting it to make sure those checks are good? Yeah, you can do uh, dev tools, colon, colon, release. Yeah. So then it'll say, like, did you test it on this? Did you test it on that? Like, did you use, did you check your spelling? Did you, I don't, like, all that stuff will just automatically kick it back to you when you try to submit it to CRAN. Um, like there's weird stuff, like you can't use the name of the package in your description of what the package does. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like I, <laughs> that was all uh, stuff I wasn't expecting. Totally. <laughs> um, what is our hub? So our hub is uh, in slightly technical terms, it checks your package on multiple operating systems by using Docker. So like if you like just you check our hub, it will send your package to be tested by like Mac and Linux and Windows. Actually, uh, I don't know yeah, the Windows. Yeah. You, have to do Windows. you have to do that for CRAN, like it said like at least three or something. Yep. And our hub will do all of them. Um so you can check you can you can check it's not expensive, although I'm having problems with our hub. It's taking a long time to do it. That's what you mean by expensive. Not that expensive meaning time expensive right now, I think. Um, I'm just going to say yes to all these just to see all the questions. So you run it locally, of course. I like that they change the numbers. Yeah, that's the by design. <laughs> Win builder. Why do you have to do that on top of our hub? So WinDevel is different than our hub because WinDevel is the Windows version of development, and our hub doesn't do that, basically. I don't know. They could be checked together, but I think WinBuilder came first. What goes in here? We haven't gone there yet, but it's uh, news. You can tell them about what your package is and what's changed since the last package. But for your first time, you're just like, this is my first one. Yeah, that, that's good enough. Okay. <laughs> that's all. Well, definitely. Cran comments. I stole this from people. I need to actually do this. That you would get from our hub. Yeah. Is this, is that kind of what it looks like? And then you yeah. throw the ignore, the build ignore? Yeah, or you can just uh, use this, use CRAN comments, and it will automatically build ignore for exactly. you. That's probably what I did. Um, that's like package, package job. Mm -hmm. Or get check successful. Like merge conflict type stuff? Yes, yeah, so it wants you to have everything merged. That makes sense. Your email matters because Cran makes sure that your email is up to date all the time. And then this is like just doing a, a, a regular check now? It's just building. And what it's doing is it's building and then uploading that file. When you, this next step basically just asks, are you ready? And then it'll submit, it'll upload the file to Cran as a service. And then, um, Cran will email you to make sure that you uploaded it and then you sign, say yes and then it gets reviewed. Okay. So if you're not actually submitting it, the stop the you would stop somewhere around here. Okay. Another question is 
the first I have to plug my computer in is can we go over like what what is a ugly package like I have a lot of files in here granted most of them are going into the build ignore like is that okay or should I clean up what do you got going on all right let's look through there's this that's ignored by github anyways and get and get ignore then you have your r build ignore r history is also ignored right should i delete the project inside here uh um, our project yeah and the project itself so i guess that was another question i wanted to ask you guys about like workflow is I like working in projects because it's just easy with like your root being the root of the project. And I don't know, it just makes sense to me. Like if you're developing packages without working in a project, what are you, how are you doing it? It's an R build anymore. I think that's pretty standard. Okay. And then you just put it in the ignore, Tyler? Yeah, I put it in the R build ignore because you don't, they don't need it. It's like part of the build process, but. Yeah, line two, it's already there. Okay, so I did that. And like package down, that's good. You're gonna have, and these guys, you could just ignore them. And then my code of conduct, I wanna keep. Data, data raw, description, docs. This is just the, um, files to reproduce the figures in the manuscript. So I figured I should have that in here. Um, and then the man is, you don't touch that ever. I think like, I usually put the, the figures in the man folder, like even on my, but I don't know what other folks do. Like if it's in my readme, I'll like still put it in the. Yeah, these figures are nowhere. They're just scripts to, they're scripts to reproduce the figures in the manuscript. Oh, yeah, you could do. Sorry, yeah, that yeah, that's that would be an inst. Actually, that would probably be a vignette. Um, well, so what's okay, in the script? That's another Sorry. thing I was going to get into. Now let's talk about that, and then I could be done. Is I have these files to reproduce these figures, and then yeah. I also have. Um, I once upon a time put it in vignettes. Then John made a comment about putting it in your test folder but that borked all my checks. So I was going to make this a vignette where now it's just a whole script that's commented because it's breaking everything. <laughs> this is kind of like, it's not a vignette because it's not, but it is because it's an application of the package. But then I also ran this like network, um, network package. So now I have all these library calls of things that are not, important to the package but like i just want to have this script in my back pocket and it is an application of this package so i didn't know where this should live i never want to do anything with it i just want to keep the script and not throw it away like where do where does a script like this go like i don't want to i don't want to put these all as dependencies in my package just because i'm using them in this vignette does that make sense so this is so sorry just rephrasing it so scripts like this either go in two directions one is it's a script that exp like it's explaining to the user how to use your package to do something and then the other kind of thing that you would keep is a script that generates something for reproducibility in your package yeah. and i think they're like separated so I think this would be one of the former, so it should be a vignette. And maybe it's one of these, like, do a vignette where require namespace or whatever, just a check to make sure that these packages are installed. If they're not installed, don't run your vignette. If that makes sense. Is that like an alternative to in packages and suggests? Yeah, you could also put it in suggests and do the same thing. Sure. Do you have to do, or you could do one or the other, or like 
to do both or their preference. I don't know that one offhand. I and think then... it's just suggests is like suggests is like it would help build your vignettes or whatever, but it will fail gracefully if not. So I guess it's a I guess it's a both. But like if you don't actually want to suggest that package, then you can Okay. Just leave it. Also, like, I won't break your thing. These scripts take a long time to run. That's also why I didn't want them as vignettes, because that's annoying. Is there a way to be like just don't run my vignettes when you're checking the package or no? Uh, is there a way to like cache what you do with like maybe normal markdown? Is that allowed? You can. It adds to the size of your package problems. Oh. Um, so and you can actually cache stuff and refer, like mock or stub it so that it like refers back to the thing to to like hard data instead of to uh, other places. Yeah, I mean, the other thing you could do is just do eval equals false and just always show code and explain what the code is doing, which is, I think, what you're doing, right? Oh. So you would set your vignette to not evaluate the code and oh, just no, here's an example of data. That is essentially what I'm doing by commenting out everything. OK, I love that idea. So format it as a vignette, like actually like yeah, take yeah, time yeah. to like write out your, your text blocks and code blocks separately and explain like motivations or whatever but yeah, yeah. you could also do that um awesome i don't i don't know if that will if that might cause you to fail something else i don't think it will but i like that idea and then code coverage i'm pretty good um i made some dumb things for my plots to make sure that the labels are what they're supposed to be. Do you guys have like go-to tests for plots? In the latest version of test at 3.0, you're supposed to be able to like snapshot plots, which is like a way to, mm -hmm. to check them. I use this method when I, when I uh, do the same thing. Um, but I do remember seeing that in his talk about test at 3.0. Yeah. There's also viz differ, v i z d i f f r, I think, um, and that's supposed to help you evaluate plots, um, but I haven't, I haven't used it. I think I was still comparing SVGs, but I could be entirely wrong. You might be right. Um, which plots can be? Okay, cool. All right. Um, I had a question about the data again. Um, yeah. Do you still have it in your environment? Uh, this guy, yeah. I just noticed that there's like a ton of columns. Um, and I thought like more, like you could have as many rows, not as many rows, but I think it's like more, um, I think it takes up more memory to add more columns. So I was curious if there might be a opportunity to store it in like a long, a long format and then have a function that Flips widens it? it for you. That way you could like store the, the bigger data. Um, and I'll, and then the other question I had, which maybe someone else <laughs> has an answer to, but uh, I'm like I think integer fields are like by default 32 bit, um, and I was curious if there's like a smaller field size if the value is always going to be under a certain amount. I think you can use raw. What's that? Uh, there's like the the raw data types. It's like really used i don't know you might want to check it out They're really Maya, could, could you run uh with the your data set just run like t uh tidy R gather on it and just store it as an object i'm just curious what it says in your environment much bigger. So that wasn't the answer. <laughs> Good try. Whoa. 
Uh, I think, I'm not sure what's in your data set, but uh, I think it probably converted them all to character. I don't know if you had ones that were, uh, some were characters and some were integers. Um, but I think it bumped out the character size and then stored everything at that size. Um, and, you know, I, yeah. I, I haven't seen what the full data set looks like, but I see a bunch of zeros. And that's what this is. You know, the sparse matrix. Yeah, it's like mostly zeros with some counts. Then but there is like a sparse matrix. Names of stuff. Then, yeah, sparse matrix would be a much, much reduced size object. What is that? That's a function? Uh, I mean, in a way, there's a number of different, I don't know if there's a base R sparse matrix. Um, yeah, like there's the capital M matrix package has a sparse matrix function. Uh, So what does this do? Uh, well, F F two. <laughs> Going down to these. Guys. I could play with this. So essentially, it would, it would like truncate this data because there's a bunch of zeros in it. It, it. it would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a data frame. It would be a uh, a spark, a matrix, in particular, a sparse matrix. But basically, it's, I guess, there are lots of different implementations. But it's kind of like run length encoding, where I can tell you that there's going to be like a, you know, a thousand zeros. Rather than storing a thousand zeros, I can just tell you there's going to be a thousand zeros in a row. That, that's not at all how it actually works, but okay, that's uh, something. But you, to think about too. It, yeah, but you'll get much reduced file size, object size. That's awesome. I did just oh. put a, a link here to this person's function of how much RAM, so you can just tell it your. <laughs> The size of your uh, data frame, and I'll tell you how much RAM it's going to take. Perfect. Rule of thumb. All right. So between making the commented codes of vignettes and, may and maybe the sparse angle or saving the data in a different repo and pointing to it, I got options. So I'm happy. You could probably just leave it in the same repo and just both and just our build ignore it and refer back to the package repo. Oh. If you really were um, saving on repos, which is completely free, so I don't know why, but you I could want... just do that. So that it's all like one spot. And then instead of like including data, although like you would probably call it like package data so it doesn't get confused with the R package data mm -hmm. folder, but um, you could, you could just store it in the same thing and refer back to the GitHub and to download more data. Sweet. Okay. Well, this was awesome. Thank you, everyone. I can't find the button that says stop sharing my screen. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think any of us have control. Really? That's a John thing, so you have to like stop it for yourself. Oh my god. This is a nightmare. There we go. I get it. I use the computer. Thank you all. Wow. Okay. Um comments, comment. I'm gonna copy and paste it for later. Cool. This was great. Yay. Anybody else have anything that they wanted to go through package-wise? Oh, you can't store 
Well, I guess you shouldn't store stuff in inst unless it's like something like for your readme, like a picture, like a plot or something. Uh, I guess what what else? I guess we'll get to this eventually in a chapter. What else can you put in inst? Is that like just where you throw anything that you're not sure about? That's what my understanding of wasn't from reading the book. It was like this is your trash folder of like just stuff you want to ignore. It's not trash as much as it's like so like let's say like it's JavaScript and you're not putting it in like compiled source. You're like copying this JavaScript file, like the framework for a JavaScript file or CSS or something like that. And you're copying it from your with your package and including it in your package. It would go into inst so that it could be accessible from the rest of the package when it's installed. So yeah. that you can copy it into an app or something like that. Now that you said that, I've built an HTML widget package before and you put your CSS and JS in inst. Which is literally yeah. what you just said, and I contributed nothing to this conversation. <laughs> Uh, so if you have larger RDA files, uh, does that mean when you load all, it'll be slower? Yeah, when I, I mean, when I load this package, because there's so much data in it, it takes a very long time. And that's lazy data not take care of that? No, oh, yeah, no, I noticed I was doing something similar where I had large RDA files, and it was like taking a lot longer like you know five seconds to load compared to like a millisecond or whatever exactly. if you don't have it so it's like i guess it's something to do with the lazy loading like it has to prepare it somehow i'm not sure about all the technical details but that was my guess wait what about what about save image what how does that could could you just load your uh get your data sets in your environment and say uh save image and then i don't, I don't know how that compresses the, the file size. Uh, yeah. Well, I was just thinking on this, on the same, in the same vein of the inst, why can I just shove the data in there? And then instead of loading the data, like as data that's included with the package, make a function that loads the data from inst if the user requests it. Does that make yeah. sense? I, I was, yeah, I'm wondering, can you do that like with a, I'll let you post on Kernel if you had something. If you had data in there? Yeah, and like you had a function that like read from there. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I got a follow the question though, sorry. <laughs> so let's say you just wanted to like get a REPL and instead of doing RDAs in the data folder, you're like, I'm going to put my CSVs in inst folder. I mean, it's literally what you were suggesting, Tan, but instead of pulling from GitHub, you're pulling from inst. Instead of pulling from the internet, you're pulling from inside the package. The problem isn't where you're pulling it from. It's the, the problem is how big your package is installed and or compressed onto right. CRAN. That's so if it's like pulling from a different spot, it's still included in what goes on to create. So, so say it's like small enough doing this other method. Like, is that going to be OK? Are they going to like? It would have to be significantly small. It would have to be small enough that the it was like significantly smaller. And I don't know how many gain, how many like shrinkage gains you're going to get from doing it this way. But it's possible. But like, you still have to include the file. So, it, like, you don't have to compress it a heck of a lot. And so, like, I'm thinking already, like, you need to depend on, like, Arrow or some other, like, C library where it's, like, you know, super compressed. But then, like, it's, yeah, I, I, I would imagine that you would, you, the, the gains from including this data in your package. And also, depending on a library like Parquet, Arrow, um, Vroom, et cetera, you're probably still losing, I think. Can we make a package of a really tiny data set 
and put the data set in every possible place and see what crosses <laughs> it. So you look like the functions would be like low data from use data, low data from the ints file, low data, like that would be the name of the data set would point to how you're loading it. And we could see how much we could piss Cran off. Oh, I mean, that part you don't need to do without <laughs> twisting your brain. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I like Tony's question is like a thought experiment. Like, where are you allowed to put this? That karma, like, you don't want to piss right off because they're, you know, they're just, you know, people in a good, you know, class for the community. I know. You're going to hassle them. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it works, except that, like, Cran doesn't actually check where is this thing. As It sort of does, but it doesn't really. And then all it does is it lumps the whole package together and, like, okay, this package is this big. It's like, it's like it takes your whole ball. It's like it takes a big, like, file cabinet and weighs it. It doesn't matter which drawer you put the file in. It's still the weight of the drawer that it's measuring or the yeah. weight of the box, right? So that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah, I guess that, I mean, you could try it. It would be a fun way to get banned from Cran. <laughs> you know, cool but useless? That'll be my new Twitter handle. Banned from Cran. Here's all the... <laughs> Here's everything you're not supposed to do. Ah. Genius. Did anyone else have a package to share? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm working on stuff, but I don't want to. I don't want to share it. I think something quickish. What were you saying? Um, it's something quick. Um, I don't really want to share my screen and and like have you guys watch me figure out usernames. But how uh, I had a lot of trouble getting CodeCov to work. The code coverage, like the CodeCov.yaml file is there something obvious that uh one might not be doing right that i might not be doing right that uh I literally followed the code in the readme you're having trouble with code calls whatever i was doing i maybe i couldn't sign into the website or something or doesn't I, it just take a github login login yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I can report back maybe another time. So See, whatever I was doing, it like didn't like it, and I was I was just trying to get a little badge on my readme, <laughs> and I spent like an hour. And so I you, the, the badge comes from use this, use code, use badge. There's a use badge for it, I think. Maybe not. It's not a use badge for it. Um, you want to share your screen and try to debug together? Uh, it might not be worth it. The other thing we can do with the last 15 minutes is just force Maya's package with core micro to have GitHub actions. That might be fun. It should be done in 15, I think. Do it. All right. We could totally do that, I think. I'm, I'm Here pretty we sure. Go. We're back. Okay, so go to GitHub. Should I share my whole screen then? Um, unless you want us to like talk you through it, like okay, no. <laughs> um, what was Bayesian like, babe? What? What was Bayesian babe? That was my like first iteration of branding myself when I thought I was going to be a statistician, but gave up on that life. Another lifetime. <laughs> That's an awesome name. I mean, yeah, it's you good. Like, resell that name to someone. Yeah. Someone could use it. I just want to sit on it. Um, I did buy that domain. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Actions. So then... Hey, you started a thing. I don't, I probably tried to do something and hit a button. Okay. I don't know what these are. So in a new tab, 
go to uh, our lib slash actions. So GitHub, yeah, or just search it and then dash lib. <laughs> yeah, go to your examples. Go to whichever one you want to set up. Uh, check standard is probably good, I guess. Copy paste. Copy paste this whole thing. That's so exciting. Okay, now what do I do? Uh, go back to your GitHub. Oh, not in I, the package. I mean, you could do it in the package, but I just do it from GitHub. Uh, I think it was new workflow. Oh, that's new. I would try. Or, oh. Yeah. So, 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 what you? Sorry, I, I'm very tempted to tell you. Click on this button. I want to. It's so big. <laughs> um, but I would go to set up workflow yourself. It's <laughs> suggested it. though. Okay. Um, look it's at, it's at the top. Is. Look at all. Yeah. So set up a workflow for yourself, yeah. and then Control A. Con or so yeah. So name it. What yeah. was it called again? Uh, this is R check, I think. Check standard. Yeah. Now, face is covering this this button. Start commit. No. Uh, I forget if there's any config you need to do. Just so well, let's look. Let's read through it again. Just to make sure. Oh, like. Like in the actual in here. Yeah, that looks right. Let's just um, do. It. Yeah, so then you just start commit and then commit it and then you're done. Oh wait, you might need a secrets GitHub token. Do you have a secrets GitHub token? What's that? Uh, settings. <laughs> this is like. How noob can one person be? Security, not security, secrets. So I forget how you do that. One second. For yourself or for the repo? For the repo. Do you not need one for the repo? I think you do, don't you? What, what is this? What am I doing right now? So what it will do is it needs a it needs. So is there, go, is there a developer? Or what? Like I don't think it's under secrets. I think there's another button for developer. Oh. I thought that was you making a joke about me not being a developer. Um, <laughs> is there a developer on this project? No. Um, that's where the token or the. Oh no, that's just for CodeCov. Okay, never mind. So I don't actually have a secret for GitHub. So maybe that will just work. So we're good. So we're good. Sorry. Yeah. So it's creating check standard. It's doing something. Yeah. So click it. And then click on any of them. Try uh, whichever. Mac, oh, I think. It's doing stuff. Yes. So now, what are these things? So those are things you used to, you did at some point before and have a workflow file for. Where's the file? How do I look at it? Uh, so you click on the workflow file that's next to this run in the middle of the page. That's the workflow file. And it's stored in your, sorry, you missed, you want to buy it, but it's stored in .github slash workflows slash package down YAML. Oh, this came for free with package down because I've never touched this. Okay. But yeah, so that's the one that's installed. But if you want to fix it, yeah, you can go to actions, temp, the, the tab with actions, and then go to examples, go to package down, copy the latest one. Wow. I really, I didn't realize that Yoni's talk was like, a talk on copying and pasting. It's awesome. Uh, it looks like you may have deleted it. So just do the actions, the workflow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, it was like a master class in like learning from coffee and tasting and like, but it was like super, like I still really know how to do all of it. No, it's really awesome. As long as you're like resourceful, you can like figure it out. So what does that action do that's different than like Travis or something? Uh, I thought this was like in place of Travis. Oh, is that is that the case? Yeah, it, it it's like Travis except free. So what do you what do you guys do from this file or nothing yet? Uh, I do I do package down code cov and check standard test coverage same thing that. This is so fun. Um, you, oh, so I have a code cup secret, which you probably do if you're pushing it to codecup.io, which I thought you were. Maybe. Am I? I don't know. I just so, ran the package cover once. Is you that generate once? As code cup. Yes, it goes with code cup usually. That's what I thought. Um, so scroll down, scroll down. Huh. Okay, so what this will do is just, it just tests coverage, unless there's more to, is that the very bottom? Yeah. So does this just report how, like the percent of coverage? Like, I'm curious, do you have a percent at which, like, your merge will fail because no, if you have read test of this, it doesn't really matter, except, you know, some people will only test, write tests up to like 80%. Other people will write the test that needs to be written. Well, and the know. testing is like breathing, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Okay. That was fun. Yay, we did it. See, under 15 minutes, as promised. Sweet. Cool. Yay. And yeah, like that's the very, very, very basic stuff. And then it's like, but wait, I only want it to do X if this. And that's when Yoni's talk really comes in handy because it's like, okay, yeah. so if is written like this and like the reason, like writing it for yourself is hard. But like if all you're going to do is check your package, push it to package down and test coverage, that's there. So and just studio's got your back. Sweet. Yeah. Well, thanks why we all use pick up the whole hour. I definitely thought I was just going to be like a 20 minute thing and everyone was going to like judge each other. But and we could have talked about other things, but I, I've already talked, I've already shown everybody here F FF scrapers. So, you know, it's not like. Yeah, we get it. You're on Cran already. We get it. So is Jake. <laughs> what, you know what? I, I would like to see is someone like turn a project was like completely done, it needs to be turned into a reproducible package. Like, you would do all that, not something that's like already like one that you're developing at the time, but something that's already done. It's like, now I want to hand this off to someone in a like nice, easy way for them. They got to convert that to a package. But it was just like maybe a, it's a folder with a bunch of scripts. Like, I, I think you know, Ron initially had something like that uh, and like, for a second meeting, it was like a toy example. Okay. Just, like I'd like to see that for like a larger project. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you couldn't do it in one meeting, but uh, you know, like you probably have to make design choices. You probably end up changing kind of the flow of the scripts and all that. Uh, I guess I'm interested to in see how that would work. Do you have something that you selfishly like to? Uh, I've I've actually done it before. <laughs> like it was like a like a class project where it was like. Oh, wait, I got to turn this into something I can just submit as a it's like package, but they said, like, make it reproducible. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I got this all, like, right at the end. Like, it was all working. I had, like, a model, and it had, like, thoughts and stuff. And I was like, okay, what's the quickest way? Because I was like, I just want to get this done with and just submit it. Um, yeah. And I, I just felt, like, so clean. I, I, like, I was just throwing things in files, and it worked in the end, but... 
I, you know, obviously it wasn't the most elegant solution. Um, but I don't know, I guess I'd like to see that. I've been wanting to, I don't know, do a little PR on this other packet I've been building and I just need more people to try it out. So I'm going to drop it in the chat and if you're making some plots or reports and have an opportunity to try it out, I'd, I'd like to know, uh, yeah, if it, if it helps or doesn't help or um, it's hard to understand, um, but it's really just using, it's using glue to, um, so you, so you can like give it two values and then it will create this this big list of ways of describing the difference in those two values. So if you had like, what was our patient volume this month versus the same time last month? So you could, there's some helpers to help you just figure out the answer to that question. So you could say like, compare these conditions and then that will result in two values. And then <clears throat> you can throw that into headliner, which is the main function. And under the hood, there's this big list of ways of describing those difference. So you, it could say like, it's a decrease, an increase. Um, it could tell you like the absolute difference, the percentage difference, um, it tell you the original two values you had. So you can use all that together to like create these, what I'm calling the headlines uh, to like put at the top of your plots. And it's just been like so nice and easy at work to, um, yeah, just like make small changes and like wherever you want to describe the impact of COVID. Cause there was like, yeah, like when the, pandemic hit and then we had this like descent period and then like now we're getting back to normal so I was just kind of like moving where that <laughs> where that spot on the chart was and like all of my titles and my charts all updated and it does some work for you too where it will like figure out the articles in front of the words and the numbers so like un8 versus you know a20 or un increase versus a decrease and you can also give it um you can you can give it like uh like you can give it like new phrases to add as well. So like if the if the result, if the difference that comes back is one, it, it, then it would say like one person versus two people. So you can kind of say like, I want to describe. So so you have like this, uh, it's like single versus, what is it called? Plural phrasing is the function. So you can say like, add these other phrases based on the numbers that come back. And That's then cool. it will like write these uh, the, like more complicated sentences. So. I feel like this would be good in dashboards too. Yeah, well, that's like kind of what I was hoping to use it in. I mean, the big impetus for the uh, for this package is that you know wh what's the context? Like we we're trying to get like the the so what? Like it, it, all right, so the the current patient volume is this? Like is that better or worse? Is it good bad? Like it's just hard to like get all that context. And I don't know. I feel like for each chart, you could do it somewhere between like forty and two hundred lines of code. <laughs> so if you're trying to make like 20 charts or something um, that's not really like re reasonable. So um, I use it all the time, but I, yeah, would just love more more in input. Um, so if you have an opportunity, I mean, it could be the, the subject lines of emails, it could be the headers of uh, sections in your R markdown, plot titles. I think there's a lot of possibility here. I wonder if you should like have a demo that's like a shiny app so that you could like change the slider of like that date range and see it, like see a bunch of headlines update. I think that would help just in terms of like understanding what you would use it for. Like, I know you wrote a pretty good like index and read me and stuff, but um, if that dashboard was something I could play with and see like all of the words changing and all the numbers yeah. changing and stuff, I think that oh, that's a great cool. idea. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get right on that. <laughs> Um, cause it's cool. It's cool. Like under the hood, like you can say, yeah, like add these additional phrases. Um, I, I'm going to start putting like a threshold in so that it could say like about the same. So it doesn't have to be like absolute zero to, to come back as saying like, it's the same. You could say like, well, if it doesn't change by more than this percentage, like just consider it to be like the same. Um, so you would get like different phrasing. Um, but cool. Yeah. Thank you. Cause yeah. yeah, cause like if you use that and if you keep it really, really simple and use like showcase mode to show the code back end at the same time as the front end of the code, we did this in the um, expressions app for like one of the advanced our past ones, but basically mm -hmm. show the front end and show the back end so that you're, you're, the selling point is it's really easy to make this, right? So if you keep the code like super code golfed and like just to make, show the differences and stuff, I think that'd be really cool. Okay, so should this be like an add-in? Are we going to cover that at all? 
<laughs> how do you make an ad? Because that'd be nice, right? Like you could say like, I want to make a new headline. It would pop up and then you could kind of create all these components and then like, you know, get the code to actually like put it back into your, to whatever you're actually building. That might be pretty nice. Um, uh, I, don't I have no idea how to even get started with, with add-ins. Has anyone here done them? Apparently it is like shiny and HTML widgets. So I'm going to nominate my ad just for fun. Great. Congratulations. When? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're going to teach us how to uh, create add-ins and add them to our, our packages. Cool. Yeah. MVD. I kind of want to do that. I, I can't nominate myself for anything in like a week, but eventually. Great. Yeah. I'll wait a week. I mean, I can. It's not going to be a week. What's that? I mean, it's not going to be a week. Okay. Um, it would be a long time, but I could do it eventually. You might figure it out before me. But no, I, I like that idea a lot, Dan. Um, and I think maybe both could be accomplished with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you could put more into the add-in, but like a simple, like, instead of like, it's like a vignette, but like live, mm -hmm. just to show you like the differences and stuff. So I think that'd be really cool. Awesome. Cool. Anyways, that was demo day. Um, so we're back to tests and description. No, not tests. We did tests already. We are doing description and licensing next week. Any volunteers from the people who are here? Anyone really interested in package rights and GPL and MIT and stuff? Nobody? Anybody? We're all, we're all developers and all law students, I guess, but some people are really opinionated, so. I, you know what, I'll, 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 take, I'll take one for the team since I have a presentation for this group. All I the will, memes. I will share an anecdote that at Biogen, we wanted a package to be open source and it took six months because the lawyers couldn't decide which license to use, but I didn't get to decide which license to use. That was not my choice. Well, they know a lot about licensing. Maybe we should get a lawyer to come in. <laughs> we, it, it, licensing is interesting because um, all the tidyverse packages are going to MIT. They were GPL, mm -hmm. and so like we can like like I posted in the chat. Like, there's actually quite a lot of like back and forth about like which one it should be and why. Um, and it's really around the nature of open sourceness, which is interesting, but. Yeah, uh, I think that would actually be a relatively interesting, if not super technical, presentation. So, yeah, I'll, I'll find a way to make it interesting. <laughs> we have no doubts, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we will chat again next week this time, and possibly throw in another Dev Day at some point. Sweet. Thank you, everyone, for entertaining my package. And now it's going to be awesome. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.